Welcome back. Myopia is the medical term for short-sightedness or the inability to see distant objects. This medical challenge has been rising at an alarming rate around the world. It is estimated that by 2050, as much as 50% of the world's population will be affected. Joining us is Dr. Ismail Magda, ophthalmologist and member of the Ophthalmological Society of South Africa. Dr. Magda. Thank you so much for joining us. A very alarming statistic and quite scary, that is. If we could start by further unpacking what myopia is. So, um, hi. Um, thanks for having me on. So, I think in simple terms, myopia is when people say they're short-sighted. In other words, they have difficulty seeing things at a distance. And with that being said as well, what causes that as well? Is it something that happens naturally or is it societal things? So one obviously is genetic factors. If your parents are myopic, you're more likely to be myopic. But we found that there's a lot of, um, I guess you could say societal factors. So especially in the modern world with things like devices, our iPads, you know, our cell phones, smartphones, with kids spending increasing amounts of time on them, in addition to this, kids spending a lot more time indoors, probably compounded a little bit by um, the lockdowns and the pandemic, but also just with, I guess, our modern lifestyle, especially in urban areas. Um, these things have been found to um, increase not only the prevalence of myopia, but the severity of myopia. And speaking about children as well, Dr. Magda, um, it is quite often that, you know, parents or guardians will give their child a, a tablet to keep themselves busy as well. It also does give a, a little bit of relief as well to that guardian or parent. But what are the dangers of increased screen time? So um, I'm a parent myself. I know it's difficult. Um, you know, kids get pretty addicted to these devices. Mm. And um, I think given your busy schedules, it's sometimes tempting to give that to your toddler. The danger is really, well, one is obviously myopia. It's that these children will be far more likely to develop short-sightedness and far more severe short-sightedness. So if you look at the guidelines overseas, the Australians are talking about not allowing smartphones in kids under 14. The American Society of Pediatrics want to limit or suggest limiting screen time to about an hour a day. Besides for myopia, it's not good for a developing child's brain. Recent evidence shows that it sort of it delays their neurocognitive development. So as much as it might seem um, innocuous or innocent, I think um, it's in all our interests, in our children's interest, to um, reduce screen time. Yeah, you just also touched on um, the ability for um, uh, to learn as well. And that's what I wanted to ask you, how this uh, poor vision and increased poor vision, particularly in children, impacts their ability to be able to learn. So um, remember, if you can't see very well, you're at school, maybe it's a school with a huge class where the teacher might miss you. You're sitting a little bit behind, you might not be able to see the board. That's probably the simplest manifestation. These kids become irritable, frustrated. They end up getting misdiagnosed, having behavioral issues, and their self-esteem really suffers as a result. Um, so really, I think it has profound impacts on a young child. Mm. And so besides that, the ability to play sport, the ability to associate with their peers, you know, it's, um, it's not as simple as just being short-sighted. Yeah. You know, what are the what are the long term effects as well? I mean, uh, smartphones and tablets have been around for a couple of decades now. Do we have um, evidence to show the the impact that it has on uh, on adults as well who have been exposed to these kinds of gadgets from an early age? So, um, if you look at uh, Asian countries, they are already talking about incidence of myopia around ninety percent in their twenty to twenty one year olds. Um, besides for the myopia, just as an adult, um, the blue light in your devices suppresses your melatonin cycles, destroys your circadian rhythm. Try it yourself tonight, put your smartphone off two hours before you sleep and see what a better sleep you get. But really, we're talking about myopia, and um, perhaps in this country, we haven't been exposed to um, devices as much for the past 20 years, but in countries in the first world that have been, they have seen increased prevalence of it. It's very poorly understood why smartphones in particular or devices and your work causes it. Remember, let's not only blame iPads and devices. Um, 
looking looking at your book too closely, um, reading in a poorly lit room, all those things will also impact your myopia. Not spending enough time outdoors. What's recommended is kids spend up to 11 hours in sunlight a week. And I'm not sure um, many kids in our urban areas especially are getting that. Yeah, it's also quite difficult in a, a country that has rampant crime as well. You know, a lot of the time, um, guardians and parents prefer to also keep their children indoors um, because of the neighborhoods that they live in as well. For those people who do live in confined spaces, who aren't able to go outside and play as easily as possible, what are the what are other alternatives that they could possibly try? I mean, I heard you just mention not uh, being on your cell phone for the last two hours before going to bed as well. So, but that, that's not really myopia. That, that's more just for your general um, neuro health, mm -hmm. but uh, in your sleep. But you're talking with somebody who's living in a very densely populated urban area where there might be crime. It's difficult, difficult because you indoors. There's less to do, perhaps you're more likely to sit on a device as an escape. Um, I guess those are things that have to be taken in a public health measure level, where you've got to create safe spaces for kids. We should be having that in our country. It's disappointing that we don't, that we don't have playgrounds for them, for kids. We don't have safe areas. We've pretty much failed our um, pediatric population, I would think, in those measures. Hmm. And just finally, Dr. Magda, what are some of the signs and symptoms that uh, teachers and parents should be looking out for um, from their children? I know one of them is uh, rubbing of the eyes as well. Uh, rubbing of the eyes, a bit more with allergies. It gets to myopia in a more roundabout way in those kids develop keratoconus, which is one of the perhaps acquired forms of uh, myopia. Um, rubbing the eyes, squinting the eyes, irritability, poor performance at school. And I guess the simplest one would just be seeing that your child's holding up um, his, piece of, his reading material or screens a little bit too close to the face. I do just want to make sure um, or to really benefit your audience what we should get at is it's not something that can't be prevented or can't be treated uh, once it's found. So if you think your child's myopic or they've been diagnosed, I urge you to see an ophthalmologist, perform a proper cyclopedic refraction, which unfortunately only the ophthalmologist can do, obviously working in um, concert with the optometrist. You can start these kids on drops. You can bear supplements for them. There's, lot, there's uh, special contact lenses, special glasses, and there's a lot of things to prevent them getting worse. There's a huge difference between somebody who's got a mild myopia of minus one to somebody who's at minus six or minus eight. People, as they get worse myopia, they risk retinal detachment, they risk glaucoma, they risk early cataracts. It really can become a blinding disease. And if there's anything that anyone takes um, home from this, it's that you need to be proactive once it's found. Well, thank you so much for ending this chat off on the solutions of this as well. Really appreciate you joining us this evening.